Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to You Know The Score. I'm back. It's been a long time, been a long time. I think the last time I was here, I was interviewing uh, Alton Brown uh, for the Mandela Mall. But uh, yeah, since then, um, I thought I'd be happy as Larry, but obviously not because we're in a situation whereby these lot are just breaking my heart. They're just breaking my heart. Every game, week after week, spoiling my Saturdays, spoiling my Sundays. I mean, <sighs> where do we begin? Where do we begin? Um, where's it all gone wrong? <sighs> but yeah, before we, uh, before we begin into the inquest, uh, what I want you to do is like, share and subscribe to You Know The Score. It's been a long period of time, but... Like I said, I'm going back on track and I'll be giving you more content this season. So don't worry about that. So make sure you like, share, subscribe to YKTS Football. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, YKTS Football. And follow me on Twitter, Shingy underscore LDN. And follow me on Instagram, Shingy underscore Rosé. However, let's get into it. Um, oh, boy, last season... I was singing Ollie's at the Will like it was uh, my gospel song. And now, oh, God, he can't, <laughs> he can't catch a break. He can't catch a break. I mean, it's just absolutely gone downhill. It's been an absolute horror show, a uh, catalogue of errors. Um, I think it's just highlighted the incompetence of the board since uh, Fergie left because how we've gone from Premier League champions in 2013 and spent near enough... 900 million pounds to being in a relegation battle in 2019 it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever and uh, i just find it embarrassing i mean if we look at this graphic here uh since we had that epic night in psg um you know where we won 3-1 in the last minute Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had 22 games he's won five drawn seven lost 10 and scored 19 goals and conceded 30. Now, I mean, that is relegation form in itself. Um, and I mean, any manager, I don't want Oli, I don't want Oli to get sacked, but I just don't think he's the right man. But any manager for, of a top European elite club, right, after those results would be getting sacked. Would be getting sacked. I mean, we've got memes like this, look, I mean, you know, we're in a relegation battle with the likes of Sheffield United who've just come up from the championship. You know, teams like Bournemouth who have a shoestring budget. You know, Norwich City who've come up from the championship. Oh, God. I mean, and obviously, we, you know, we've got Newcastle there who beat us last week 1 0 at St. James's Park after that dismal performance. And, you know, like I said, any manager would be in a situation where they'll be, you know, facing the sack. But, I'm not too sure whether it's sentiment that's saving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because he's our, he's, he's our legend. He gave us that epic night uh, in 1999 in Barcelona in the last minute to give us our second Champions League trophy. But, I mean, in all honesty, that doesn't warrant you to be, you know, become Man United. I mean, as, as Jamie Redknapp said on Sky Sports, and I don't usually agree with, with him because he talks a lot of rubbish sometimes, but, you know, you, you, you don't go from... You know, you don't go from Cardiff to Mulder to Manchester United. That that's not the transition. That that's not what it should be. That's not the process. You know, I could understand if Solskjaer came in, let's say, for example, after Ferguson instead of Moyes, because you know he would have been coming into a team full of winners, leaders, characters, and he would have had, you know, a bit more assistance, uh, a bit more character from the players to help him get through. You know, because they were winners. They were winners. Obviously, the players didn't get on with Moyes, but I think the players would have got on with Ole. So I think that's when it would have been a good time to have Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in charge as Manchester United manager, and and you know slowly transition out of the fate or out of the Fergie phase, and you know he could put his own stamp on it. But now, you know, we we're asking him. We are asking Solskjaer to rip the squad 
to its bare bones and build the team again, right? And still expect him to try and compete to an extent. And he's an apprentice in, in himself. I mean, he doesn't really have a rich CV. Like I said, you know, he went from you know, Cardiff, he got them relegated, didn't have a good record in the championship. Then he went to Mulder. I mean, more Norwegian football, it's not really, you know, uh, the most competitive league in the world. To be a Manchester United manager, and is he out of his depth? I mean, result, th those results suggest he is. Um, I mean, you know, people say that he needs time. You know, his fellow mates, you know, Rio Ferdinand, Gary Neville saying he needs time to, to you know, stamp his mark on things. But in my opinion, since the PSG game up until the end of last season, I didn't see anything to suggest that he was going to turn things around. Then you're thinking to himself, OK, let him get rid of certain players. Um, and bring in his own players and have a, a pre-season to, you know, like I say, stamp his mark on things. Um, you know, we had a good pre-season, you know, you're thinking, OK, maybe, you know, we could push for top four. Uh, we could be, you know, a, a shoe in for top four. Um, but you can never go off pre-season results anyway. And then, you know, the season starts and you're thinking, OK, he's got rid of, he's got rid of Lukaku. Doesn't fancy Smolin, uh, doesn't fancy Damian. Um, you're thinking we've got three forwards here, um, you know, in, in, in uh, Sanchez, Rashford and, and Marcia. You're thinking, OK, well, maybe. But then he gets rid of, rid of Sanchez. Now, uh, we'll get on to that. But, uh, you know, he's come out and said that, well, the board have come out and said that, or there's reports, according to his graphics, that Man United are keen to continue with the summer policy of signing young players, British players. I don't understand why they have to be British if you're good enough. If, even if you're from Cambodia or whatever, what have you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you're good enough, we want you. Um, but they say the key is youth um, and character and people who actually want to play for Manchester United. I get that. I get that. I, I totally get that. However, you cannot get rid of players like Sanchez and Lukaku, right, um, and expect to have Rashford, who's not prolific, and to have Martial, whereby, you know, it depends what side of the bed he gets out in the morning to, to see what type of player you're going to get, uh, so, so to be banging in the goals. They're not prolific goal scorers. Yes, yes, they got potential, but, you know, not replacing them two was, was, the, was, the, was the wrong move. And I, I, feel, I feel that getting rid of Sanchez, ah, even though he's had a shocking last two seasons at Man United, we should definitely should have kept him. I'm really, um, I was really annoyed when we let him go because I knew this was going to happen. I said, look, we get one injury to Rashford, then we've only got Martial and then uh, a 17-year-old kid, Mason Greenwood, um, you know, who's going to be leading the line. Now, that, now that, that, must, that doesn't make any sense because Mason Greenwood, he's only played youth football. Yes, he's got a fantastic record and he's got bags of talent, but he's not a seasoned pro. He hasn't played against season pro, so it doesn't make any sense. I mean, people may say, oh, yeah, well, look at Chelsea, Lampard's play blooding in the youngsters. But come on, man. Mason Mount went on loan to Derby. He's played men's football. You've got Tammy Abraham. He's been on loan to Swansea. He's been on loan to Aston Villa. Played men's football. You've got uh, Tom Ware, uh, the Chelsea defender. He was at loan at Derby. Played men's football. Competitive football, right? So, you know, they're, 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 they're seasoned in, in, in a way. They're, they're more seasoned than the youth players that we've got. Now, we're asking players like Chong, Gomez, Mason Greenwood to come into a team, right, and blood themselves in and, expect, and, and we're expecting them to perform when our senior players can't even perform. So, you know, we can't expect them to do, to do much. And when Solskjaer talks about, yeah, the young players and stuff like that, we don't have the senior players around them, you know, who have the cojones, you know, the, the, the grapefruits to, to, you know, grab the game by the scruff of the neck and say, yeah, come on, lads, look, listen, we need to group together and we need to, you know, dig in and get a result here. You know, we, they play OK in games um, without creating much, but, you know, they're, they're trying, but they need, they need seasoned professionals around them and senior players to help, to, to help guide them through. Um, and... Uh, the, the transfer policy, honestly, at Manchester United has been an absolute farce. You, you look at it, we spent close to £900 million. £900 million. 
in six to seven years. For us to be close to the closer to the relegation, uh, well, relegation spots, than challenging for the Premier League title. That's unacceptable. That's that's an absolute. As Alan Hansen used to say, it's an absolute horror show. Absolute horror show. Catalog of errors. Catalog of errors. Because that's like me, right? Or someone investing in me, uh, giving me a million pounds, right? To invest into you know the score. You know, get cameras, you know, more studio time, you know, traveling the world and stuff like that. And then in the next three to four years time, I'm broke. What have I done with that money? Do you know what I mean? I haven't got nothing to show for it, you know, and that's, that's what it looks like uh, with Man United at this moment in time. It's, uh, it's, it's, and I can't even get angry anymore. Like in the first few seasons when we had Van Gaal, David Moyes, you know, um, uh, Mourinho, you know, struggling to get it right. I was getting angry, but now I'm just, I'm more disappointed in Manchester United, the way things have been handled. You know, it's, it's unacceptable. Um, you've got an in- incompetent CEO at Manchester United who's power hungry um, and doesn't seem to want to appoint a director of football. I mean, I saw uh, an article the other, well, uh, on Sky Sports not too long ago, uh, Lil Sporting Director Lewis Campos, and he says, of course, I believe I could help Manchester United. I want to work with a big club one day. And he's been successful in finding young talent. Mbappe, Bakayoko, Bernardo Silva, um, a few other players, Pepe. He's, he's unearthed a lot of time. Fabinho, you know. Um, he, he was instrumental in, in orchestrating the, the, the Monaco side that went to, I think, I believe it was the semi-finals and they won the, the, the League R. And those players are dotted around Europe now. Um, playing for the biggest clubs in the world, okay, and they're actually flourishing. Now, we've been saying for the last 18 months we we need a a technical sporting director. Why why on earth do we still not have one? Why? why? I don't understand why we still don't have one. What is is the long game for? And this is why I, I feel that basically Ed Woodward is just so incompetent at his role you know, he's so power hungry, he wants to do everything. He wants to be pictured in London on his phone, acting as if he's conducting business and negotiating, pulling the strings, you know. And then when we buy a big game, big name player, you know, he wants to create music videos and, you know, put people in front of pianos and, you know, hire your, your, your Stormzies to, to, to be in a music video amongst our, amongst our players. And he just really needs to get a grip and say to himself, OK, look, I need to... Hire a committee, right? Speak to the manager that is in charge at the time and ask him who he wants, one or two who he wants in the committee to help him scout players, right? And do it collectively, yeah? And let Solskjaer have the final word or Solskjaer's, you know, uh, scouting committee have the final word because we need a proper recruitment policy and that's only going to work with a, a, a technical sport, sporting director. It's just, uh, it's just so annoying. And one thing I would say, me, I'm, I'm glazers out because I think, you know, they're, they're money hungry and obviously they're sucking the lifeblood out of the club in, in a way, uh, bought our club on debt um, and they're reaping the walls of the profits. However, we cannot say yeah we cannot sit here today we cannot sit here today right and say they have not given us money to spend they've given a shed load of money to woodward and said look mate there you go you've got this war chest to spend okay with this manager go and deal with the manager and find the players He's found big name players which weren't right for the club. Now, it's no coincidence that Moyes, Mourinho, Van Gaal said that working at the, you know, the conditions at Manchester United, you're not, you're not set up for, for success, you're set up for failure. Because clearly there's a disconnect between the manager and the CEO. There always seems to be a breakdown. You know, it always seems to be a breakdown. I, I, <sighs> I just just can't understand why it's taken so long. There's been uh, yeah, it's, it's rancid at the club. I mean, there's been so many mistakes in the last six years. It's uh, it's untrue. 
it's untrue. You, you think, okay, yeah, we may be able to kick on and then, we, you know, we go two steps back. Again, uh, in, you know, uh, it's, it's disappointing, man. It's disappointing. And in terms of the players that we currently have at the club, I'm going to look at this boy, Rashford. And uh, I feel he's been unfairly criticised by a lot of Man United fans. Um, it's not fair, but, uh, you know, his stats, his stats are not the greatest. Now, if you, you can compare him here to Bentner, Nicholas Bentner. Now... He's had 180 games and scored 48 goals. Bentner scored 171 in 40, uh, scored 47 goals in 171 games. Um, now he, Bentner's averaging 3.63 goals per game, and Rashford is averaging 3.75 goals per game. Now it's unfair that people are putting up these statistics because I feel that Rashford. Uh, he suffered a bit in terms of playing under different managers, different styles of play. And he's, I think he's confused himself as to what his best position is. You know, is he a striker? Is he a left wing forward? Is he a right wing forward? You know, he feels like he's a, a striker, but he's not prolific enough. He, and the other problem is, is that he doesn't have the players around him, yeah? The players around him to learn off and to play with quality players, top quality players. Because I believe if Rashford was playing for a team like PSG, if he was playing for a team like Manchester City, Liverpool, Spurs, you know, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Real Madrid, if he was in a team like that, I feel like he could kick on, you know. He'd find his position, right, and he could kick on. Now, a lot of, a lot of Man United fans are getting onto the, the kid, um, which I feel, you know... It, <sighs> He does get on my nerves. I mean, you know, he loves taking free kicks and kicking them into Rosette. Um, you know, his inner Ronaldo comes in and he just hoofs it into, into Rosette, as I said. But he needs the players around him to actually learn from. You know, we're, we're relying on him to get us the goals. He's never been prolific. Never been prolific. He's only 21 as well and he's still got a lot to learn. So I feel like Man United fans need to kind of get off his back. But I think also Rashford needs to kind of think to himself, where is my best position? And, and think about it. Think about it. Because his decision-making is poor. So Rashford, just sit down, you know. Have a break and say to yourself, look, where is, my, where is my best position? Where am I most effective? That's what he needs to do. And go back to the basics right now. Because he can't lead the line. And we've seen it all season, you know. And it is showing because we can't get goals. We can't get goals. I mean, we score one goal, right? We don't kick on the team equalise. I sit back, I'm like, OK, yeah, we're not going to get another goal. We're not going to get another goal. This is 1-1. One, one. Or if a team goes 1-0 up against us, I'm thinking, well, yeah, this game's probably done. The best we can get is a 1-1, one, one, really. Back in the day, we could be 2-0 down, 3-0 down. I'll still be on the edge of my seat saying, yeah, look, it's calm. Look, we've got 45 minutes. We can get back in this. We can win 2-1. We can win 3-2. We can win 5-3. We can win Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be fussed. I wouldn't be fussed at all because I knew we'd be peppering the team's goal to get goals. And if you can't get goals in football, my friend, you are finished. You are absolutely finished. You're done, dusted. And moving on, this guy's another one, you know, uh, another academy product. Jesse Lingard. His record for us is just, uh, it's, it's just not good enough. And this just highlights the lack of quality that we have in our team. Now, since August 2018, he's got four goals and two assists. Actually, I think he's got three assists. Um, actually, no, no, four goals and two assists in the Premier League. No, so I think that's a correct, a correct stat there. Now, for him being a forward, a number 10 or whatever you want, you know, we want him to be, those stats are incredibly poor. They're absolutely shambolic. Shambolic, man. Jesse, I mean, you know, I, I like your personality and stuff like that, but you've got to do better, man. You've got to do better. That's not good enough. That is not good enough. I mean, you've got worse, worse stats. I think that was the wrong choice of words, but I'll still use it anyway, yeah? Um, you've got worse stats than a man that's been in jail for three and a half years. Three and a half years, that's shocking, man. What are you doing? And, you know, it's, it's, 
it's ended up, well, what's happened is that Jesse Lingard has subsequently failed to get into the England squad because obviously Southgate has realised that he's not performing, he's not getting goals, he's not affecting games, he's not really doing much, you know, he's just coasting through games, he's just run, running around like a fly, you know, so... Yeah. It just goes to highlight, you know, the, the, the lacking quality in terms of our forward play and uh, how we've got to this. I, I don't know, man. You know, I grew up on your Van Nistelrooy's, your Eric Cantona's, your Ryan Giggs, your David Beckham's, your Cristiano Ronaldo's, your Wayne Rooney's, your Luis Sahar's, your Eric Cantona's, you know, Andy Cole's, the White York, Teddy Sheridan, Solskjaer, you know, forward players that could get you goals. I look at my team and I, I'm thinking to myself, where, where are the goals coming from? Where are they coming from? You know, I, I know we, we, we dissed Lukaku and it was probably the right time for him to go. But, you know, it, you can't let goals like him, uh, guys like him go who get you goals without getting a replacement. You have to get a replacement. <sighs> but yeah, at this moment in time, it, it, I don't know, man. It, the, the future looks bleak for... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I mean, there's reports surfacing that he could be sacked if we lose against Liverpool. But then uh, there are reports coming out uh, in the media stating that the, the, you know, the board are backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, and they're backing the process uh, for him to stay in, the, uh, in as manager uh, so he can you know, bring back the culture of Man United. But here's a list of who are the, uh, well, the odds for who could be Manchester United's next manager i mean pochettino he's, he's having a bad time with with spurs at the moment he's obviously the hot favorites i mean i thought he was going to be the man to replace uh jose Mourinho. i mean that should that should have been the transition in my opinion although he hasn't won anything you got brendan rogers mm, would we want him he was previously at liverpool uh, i don't know he's a good coach he's got leicester playing well you've got allegri you know very experienced you know went to uh juventus you know, you got Lauren Blanc, he's well-seasoned. Um, you got Ten Hag, <sighs> Woody Kai at Man United, who knows? He's a good manager, though. And you got Wenger at 16-1. to 1. Ah, I mean, the battles that we've had with, with Arsenal, I mean, I just wouldn't want any, any type of Arsenal person in and around my club because, yeah, I, I, I hate Arsenal. I hate Arsenal with a passion. And, yeah, you know, Wenger, I, I respect you. You know, you gave me some uneasy times back in the 90s and the early 2000s. But, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want you to be managing my club, man. Uh, you know, you, you just stay uh, an old foe, basically. But, uh, yeah, I mean, those are the odds there. Um, it's interesting. To, it'll be interesting the next few weeks. I know, obviously, it's the international break, so we can take a break from worrying about Man United. Man United not going to ruin my weekend this weekend. Um, so, you know, that's my face when, when, you know, Man United play. But, yeah, they're not going to ruin my, my weekend at all, which is a good thing because I'm tired of it. I'm absolutely tired of it. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, does he stay? Does he go? Ole's at the wheel? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Those wheels need to be checked out, really and truly. And... Uh, it looks like we've got a blast from the past, but, you know, who's worse? Solskjaer or Moyes? You know, we're currently in the relegation battle at the moment. Um, you know, but... <sighs> Moyes was bad, but, yeah, I think this is worse, man. Uh, I, th I think this is worse. It, you know... <sighs> it's sad times right now to be a Man United fan. I mean, yeah... I have no words. I have no words. You can see Oli, he seems like he's, he's aging every day, struggling to cope with the pressure. Um, I, I, how long can this continue? How long can this continue? Because if, if it does, we could end up playing Barnsley next season, you know, in the championship. So, yeah, God, I can't believe I'm saying this, boy. But, uh, you know, I've experienced some great times with Man United as a kid, you know, in my... Uh, well, I'm not going to reveal my age, but yeah, since I was a kid. Um, but yeah, hopefully things can get better, but we'll see. But um, yeah, thanks for joining me this evening anyway. It's been You Know Score. It's my first show back in a long period of time. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel, which is uh, You Know The Score, uh, YKTS Football. Follow that on Twitter 
and on Instagram. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Shingi underscore LDN. Follow me on Instagram, Shingi underscore Rose. Um, and yeah, man, there'll be more to come this season. I'll be back on the road soon doing my fan cams. Don't you worry about that. I'll tell you that now. I'll be back very soon. Just stay locked. It's you know the score. It's your boy Shingi. We're back and I'm out. Yeah.